So my name is Julian Bobroff. I'm a physicist, a French physicist, as you can guess from my accent. And I'm working nearby Paris at the Paris-Saclay University, and I'm a professor there. Um, I think we have a real issue in trying to reconnect science and the real world, and especially in front of the environmental crisis. Nowadays, from my point of view at least, science labs are a little bit disconnected, detached from real life, and especially from nature. And our students, our children, are increasingly looking for a meaning and a way to face the environmental crisis. So we have somehow to reconnect both and to show them that science can indeed be helpful to better understand the world and trying to find new solutions. When we say low-cost tools, we really mean low-cost. So it would be, I don't know, like a piece of food like that, or a piece of paper, or a ruler, everything that you already have in your classroom, basically. The only expensive tool we add in that story is the smartphone. Because smartphone is, of course, very expensive, but most of teenagers have them already in their pocket. So we consider it as a fake low-cost tool. So with all these very basic tools, we can do a lot of physics, in fact. For example, the smartphone contains a lot of sensors. You can measure acceleration, you can measure magnetic field, you can measure light. So you can do a lot of experiments with your smartphone. Let me perhaps give you a live experiment with that, even not with the sensors, but with the camera. Just using the camera of your smartphone, I'm going to show you how you can do low-cost physics. So this is my smartphone. I hope you see it well here. I'm going to turn it upside down so that you can see it. And I'm just going to add a drop of water on my camera. So my camera is here, and I'm putting a drop of water here. So now it's completely unfocused. And here, I have created a low-cost microscope. Look at that. If I'm putting, let me put, a, I don't know, like a flower or something like that nearby, now I have a microscope integrated in my smartphone. I can do it with a bill like that, and I can see all the details. And if I put a ruler, I now have a scale integrated to my smartphone, and I can measure one millimeter scale. And so just like that, I have transformed my smartphone into a microscope, which can take pictures, which can take movies, and then I can go outside. I can just shoot the real world and then do physics and science from that. So you see that low-cost tools really mean tools you have in your pocket and which allow you to do physics wherever you want. So we have been using smartphones for years now and also many colleagues all around the world. And we have tried to study also the effect and the impact on students. And uh, I think one thing which is very clear from the studies we've done is that smartphones help the engagement of the students. They get more fun, they get more engaged in the process. And also one key aspect we found in our teachings is not the low cost tools or smartphones themselves, but the fact that they allow you to go outside of the classroom, outside of the lab room. So now you can go, I don't know, in the schoolyard or you can go in the street and you can measure real life stuff. And that's a key aspect in these teachings that really transforms the way students see science. Now they understand that science can be all around them, not just in a lab room a environment or, or setup. Okay, so if you want to use a smartphone, first you have to download free apps. And there are many free apps all around the world which were created by universities themselves. For example, there is Firefox or Physic, which are very good apps, which allow you to use all these sensors which are already in your smartphones. Also, with my team, we have developed many free resources. And you can find all of them here in this low-cost web link, as you see. And for example, one resource you will find, just to give you an example, is what we called the Smartphone Physics Challenge. So the Smartphone Physics Challenge, we propose you to measure the height of a building, any building, for example, the school itself, with your smartphone. And we found 61 ways to do it, different ways to do it. And so we propose you all these ways and we help you understand how to use them with your own students. I think I see low-cost tools as an amazing opportunity to renew the way we teach science, to renew our pedagogy and also to make it more meaningful, to make it also more creative, more engaging. And that's true for the students, but for the teachers as well. I mean, it's really more fun to get outside and just to measure things around you. Let, let, let me give you a very practical example. Recently, we brought our own students in the forest and we stayed there for one day in the forest and we asked them to measure whatever they wanted. I don't know, the insects, the wind, the trees, et cetera, et cetera. And so that they could understand the forest in this low cost approach. And that really opened new ways for us to teach and also to empower them, to show them that they can act on their environment, that they can understand it better, that they can address real issues. 
And I think that will be a key aspect in the future of studying science, trying to show our children, our students, that science can help them act facing the present challenges. So if you're in, indeed confronting that policy of no, no mobile phone allowed, I would say try to make an exception. Try to negotiate with everyone around and telling them that you're going to do science and you're going to use smartphone in a smart way. And that's what we do usually in France. We try to negotiate in schools to have an exception to that policy. The other solution is to use tablets like iPads, which also have many sensors embedded. But I think the best way is trying to tell your superiors that in your course, the smartphone will be used in a smart way. And so you have to negotiate for two facts. First, using the smartphone and then being allowed to go outside. 